afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Spotlight on History for Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. I'm Mary Helen Dellinger, curator of the Manassas Museum, and I want to thank you for joining us today. So we're back in our collection storage area where we've been before to look at two pieces from our collection, a telephone switchboard, which you see right here, and an old telephone that I'll share with you in a little bit. So I picked these two pieces today because it's a special birthday. On this date in 1847, Alexander Graham Bell was born, the so-called inventor of the telephone. He'd be 174 years old if he was still alive today. So happy birthday, Mr. Bell. So we'll start with the switchboard here on my right. This dates to about 1905, and it was used for a number of years on a bus in a business on Center Street. Now this one's in really rough shape. You can see where it's missing some things. Um, that's kind of typical. They were they were um, saw a lot of hard use, but this is a great piece of early communication history. So the switchboard works like this. Someone wanting to place a call would lift the receiver on the phone that they had in their home or business, and they would speak to the switchboard operator. And the switchboard operator spoke into this piece right here. So she would sit here. It was mostly women that ran these. They were called hello girls because that's they always answered hello. So she would say hello, and a light would come on to indicate that someone was trying to, to place a call. So they would say hello, and you would say who you wanted to speak to. So if you lived in a really small town, you might be able to ask for somebody by name, or you would ask by a number, which was usually just a combination of like two or three digits. They were very short numbers. And the operator would place the call by pulling up one of these pieces here. We're not gonna pull it all the way out because we don't want it to, to get damaged. And they would bring it up and they would plug it in up here on this top part of the switchboard. Then they would, they would push this button back and forth to cause the phone at the other end to ring. And then the person, if they were home, would hear it ringing and, and they would pick up. So that's kind of the, the mechanics of how a phone call was made. So if you lived in a really small community, switchboard operators knew everybody. They knew who you were trying to call. They might even know whether or not the person was home before they placed the call. So sometimes, you know, you'd be able to get the call through pretty quickly. Now, if you were trying to call another locality, like say you were trying to call Alexandria, the switchboard operator would have to call the switchboard operator in Alexandria say who they were trying to, to get a hold of, and the call would be patched through from various people. There was no direct calling like what we're familiar with today. So I want you to think about that for a minute, what we just, what we just talked about. You needed an operator to place a call. So if the switchboard wasn't staffed, nights, Sundays when people are in church, you had to wait until the switchboard operator was on duty. So there wasn't a 24 seven phone service like we were used to today. So no late night calls for people living in Manassas over 100 years ago. So switchboard operators could also listen in on what was being said. A lot of lines back then were party lines. Multiple people shared the same type of line. There wasn't any private lines like what we're used to today. So um, you, you could make calls, but what you were saying wasn't necessarily private. So that's always kind of made fun of in the movies, the, the operators listening in. And also there was no way to tell um, if you had received a call if you weren't at home. No way to leave messages. No way to retrieve anything like that. So if you called somebody and they didn't answer, you just have to try back later. So that's kind of all about this really neat switchboard that we have um, here in our collection. So now we're gonna go into the next room and look at a phone that would have worked with a board like this. Okay, so here we are in another room in our collection storage facility with this fantastic phone um, that dates to the 1920s. This is a bit more forward in time than the switchboard. This telephone was used in a general store in Centerville, Virginia. So this is a crank style phone. You can see the crank right here on the side, small crank. And to use this phone, a caller would pick up the receiver that's on this side. So here's the receiver. I'm gonna see if I can get this out. Um, the line is broken to it. So here's the receiver. This is actually pretty heavy. This probably weighs two or three pounds. Then you turned the crank on this side and the crank produced an alternating current that rang the bell or a light on the switchboard that we saw earlier. So depending on what the switchboard used and the call was placed using the process that we've already described. So this piece is what the caller spoke into, and you probably can't see this, but there's a little piece of paper here that says, speak directly into the microphone, or into the receiver, excuse me, into the mouthpiece. So you would, you would get up close to that and you would speak, and then you would hold this receiver flat up against your ear like this while you were talking. So I want you to, to look at this phone. It says, this one is really fancy because it's got a little shelf right here where you could take notes if you want to take notes at home. So Take a look at this phone and compare this to the phones that you are familiar with just from, from you know, your lifespan or what you're familiar with today. 
So obviously um, this was mounted on a wall. It had to be, this was pretty heavy. So somebody had to come in and mount this on the wall and that's where it stayed. Um, later examples, of course, of phones were made to sit on tabletops um, anywhere you wanted them, the smaller phones as they got smaller and smaller. Um, but these phones were very big and they only worked with a switchboard that was staffed by an operator. Um, you couldn't dial directly. That type of phone, from what I understand, came widely into use in the 1930s. So that's when we started to be able to, to do kind of more direct dialing without the help of an operator. Now, of course, today we all, we all have phones that have replaced hardwired phones in their house. Everybody's familiar with one of these. Phones are small and portable now, basically like having a computer in your pocket or your purse. And we've come a long way between these two models. So you can kind of see the early phone that we have and a more modern version. So that's all we have for today. I hope you'll join me next week when we have a special program for Women's History Month. I'll see you then.